I'll say something. She's like, don't say that. Because what you say comes true. She's lived with me long enough to know what I say comes true. So she's like, don't say that. So you have to be careful because God's word in your mouth is just as powerful as God's word in God's mouth. Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. In today's video, we're going to be assessing some teaching of David Crank, the senior pastor of Faith Church in Missouri. The format is going to be the same as it always is. We are going to listen to three clips taken from a recent sermon preached by David Crank. And after each of those clips, we will come back, we will open up God's Word, and we will compare what he is teaching to the Bible. But before we get to our assessment, if you guys want to help promote Christian content on YouTube and get this out to more people on the internet, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel and thank you in advance. All right, I have described the format. Let's go ahead and jump into our first clip. Verse 3, it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was. Notice again, there's a real significance in what you say. You have what you say. You ought to write that down. So be careful what you say. I have the Holy Spirit check me, but I have my wife check me a lot. I'll say something. She's like, don't say that. Because what you say comes true. She's lived with me long enough to know what I say comes true. So she's like, don't say that. So you have to be careful because God's word in your mouth is just as powerful as God's word in God's mouth. You are made in the image and the likeness of God, and there's power in your words. Okay, so in that first clip, David Crank is talking about the importance of our words, and he claims that we can create using our words. Friends, I want to tell you right off the bat, this is a very common false teaching that you find in many Word of Faith teachings, and I want to take the time to explain to you why it is a false teaching. The whole point of me doing this is not just to speak down against certain people. Rather, it is to hopefully open people's eyes to see the truth of God's Word. Usually, if you hear a pastor make this sort of claim and, hey, be careful the words that you use because you're speaking things into existence, there's only a couple of of arguments that they have, and uh, David Crank actually used one of the main ones. He says, listen, God spoke things into creation in Genesis. He put the verse up there. God said, let there be light, and there was light, and so God speaks, and he creates when he speaks, and we are made in the image of God. That's later in Genesis chapter 1. That's very true. We are made in the image of God, and he therefore connects those two and says, well, God creates by speaking. We're made in his image, so therefore we create by speaking. But friends, you need to know that is not what it means to be made in the image of God. Being made in the image of God does not mean that I can do anything that God does or that I am everything that God is. And I can prove that to you very, very easily. So let's just start by saying God is uncreated. Are you uncreated? No, you were created by God because there is a distinction between you and God. How about the fact that God is omnipresent? That means he is everywhere all at once. Well, obviously, you are not omnipresent. You are not everywhere all at once. Or how about the fact that God is quite literally incapable of sinning? The Bible says that he cannot lie. It is impossible for him to lie. Is it possible for you to lie? Not only is it possible, we have lied, right? You have lied and I have lied. So we see that being made in the image of God does not mean that I am exactly like God or that I can do everything that he can do. And so you have to really twist the meaning of being made in the image of God to make it mean something that it doesn't actually mean so that you can get away with this teaching. Because there is no verse in the Bible that says you can create using your words. In fact, the only other main argument uh, that people will use, actually there's a couple, where they'll say death and life is in the power of the tongue. That's not a correct understanding of that verse. Or they'll go to Romans 4 and they'll say, you know, uh, call things that were not as though they were. And friends, that is also speaking of God. It's saying that's something that God does. That's something that's unique to him. It is not a commandment or something for us to do. And so David Crank is twisting this. There is no passage of scripture that says that we create using our words, uh, but yet he is going to teach that to people. And at the end, he even said, God's word in your mouth is just as powerful as God's word in his mouth. 
friends, that's blasphemy. That's putting us at the same level of God. We do not have the authority within ourselves to say something and to make it come to pass. It all comes from God. So when you say God's word in your mouth is just as powerful, I mean, I can read the Bible in God's word, but just because I'm reading it out loud or I find a verse that I like in there and I take it out of context like he's doing it, I say it with passion, that doesn't mean that I'm going to make it come to pass. It all comes from God. And so this is one of the big problems is that it just blurs the line between God and man and it makes us basically the same. It's like, well, we're made in the image so we can do everything he can do. Well, I've already very easily proven that we cannot do everything that God can do because that's not what it means to be made in the image of God. What it means to be made in the image of God, by the way, very quickly, is that of all of creation, we have the best ability to know God and to reflect who he is. So we do reflect his character more than the rest of creation, but that does not mean that we do it perfectly or that we are just like him. We are separate. He is the creator. He is holy. That literally means set apart, set apart from everything, including us, right? He's set apart from sinners and we are the creation. All right, that's it for clip number one. Let's go ahead and jump to number two. So through visualization, you can bring into the reality whatever you say, good and bad. That's why the Bible said, that out of one side of our mouth speaks evil, the other side speaks good, snared by the words of a mouth, we good for the fruit of our lips. So you got to watch what you say. I, I got to convince you tonight, here and in Florida and around the world, you're more powerful than you think you are. All right, so it's really a lot of the same stuff in that clip, except now it seems like he's adding imagination on top of it. So if you imagine something and you speak it, then it will come to pass. You will create that. And in that clip, he referenced a passage of scripture from James chapter 3. And what I love to do on this channel is to show people what it looks like to just slow down and to take the time to compare what this pastor or whoever you're listening to is saying to the word of God. And so we're going to go to James chapter three and friends, if David Crank is rightly teaching God's word to us, then we should expect when we read this portion of scripture in James chapter three, that the original context and meaning behind it is that when I imagine and speak something, I will bring it into existence. Well, let's see if that is the case. So James chapter three, we'll look at verses six through 10. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. So did you pick up on that, friends? It is saying that when we speak, we should not be speaking blessing to people, especially as Christians. You know, we shouldn't be blessing people and saying really positive things and then turning around and cursing people and tearing people down at the same time. And this is what it says, I I believe off the top of my head, I think it's Ephesians chapter four, where it talks about your conversation always being full of grace, seasoned with salt, having the right response to share with someone. So the the main point of James chapter three is that it is hard to control the tongue, but that we need to do so. We need to make sure that we are always saying what is good and what is right and what is appropriate. And so David Crank somehow takes that passage of scripture where that's the pretty clear meaning and says that it has something to do with you speaking things into existence. Friends, this is a twisting of this passage of scripture. I'd also like to take a second now to point out something to you, and I think this really matters. I think, uh, of course, studying the Bible is the best thing that we can do as Christians, but I think there is a lot of benefit in looking back through church history because we have to remember from the time where the Holy Spirit was, was poured out at the day of Pentecost, true believers have had the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that if you're a believer you have today for approximately 2,000 years. And so it's not like we're on some different level of believing than the people who lived 2,000 years ago. They had the same Holy Spirit. So I think it, you know, it's good to pay attention to what people have said and taught led by the Spirit of God for the last couple thousand of years. And if you look back 
throughout church history, the first 1900 years of the church, you will find that nobody taught what David Crank is teaching. No one said that you could speak and create things. You know when the teaching popped up? It popped up between one to 200 years ago. And do you know where it started? It wasn't in the Christian church, friends. It was in the New Age and the occult. That is where these teachings originated. They originated in the occult. And some Christians took them, gave them a Christian spin, and now present them as Christian doctrine. So friends, these these teachings have incredibly dangerous origins. They are not biblical and they are to be rejected. Okay, we have one more clip to get to. Let's go ahead and check it out. Joel 2 verse 28. You didn't know Pastor Joe was in the Bible, but he is. And it shall come to pass. Right there is a good place to shout amen. Amen. Your mother-in-law come to spend the winter. It'll come to pass. (laughs) It'll come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. Notice that's a capital S. That means the Holy Spirit. Upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams and your younger men shall see visions. I think I'm middle-aged because I have both of those. So tonight we heard Ashton kind of prophesying. It shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Prophesy means to predict, pronounce, proclaim your preferred future. So don't just sit back. As you're entering into 2022 and be like, well, when it turns 22, that's when I'm going to dream. Now, that's when I'm doing my vision board. No, 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 right now. Let's start getting ready. Let's start incubating. I I tell you what, I'm going to know what to do in 22. I'm here to tell you that some crazy, outstanding, ridiculous, awesome, good things are about to happen to me in 2022. And you start hyping yourself up. You start talking about the fourth dimension. And people say, what do you think you're going to get for Christmas? You know, I don't know what I'm getting for Christmas, but I know what I'm getting in 22. I'm getting my my house, I'm getting my mind, I'm getting my healing, I'm getting my freedom, I'm getting my breakthrough. Why? I'm incubating so I'm sitting on something right now that's about to hatch. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise today. Okay, in that last clip, he is teaching out of Joel 2 and is really speaking about the importance of prophesying and dreaming dreams and having vision in your life. So I'm not even going to talk about the fact for the sake of time that he is taking Joel 2 out of context and we're just going to address the claims that he made. So he started by talking about prophecy and he said to prophesy, he said, quote, is to predict, to pronounce, and to proclaim your preferred future. And I really want to focus on the back part. So he's saying it's all about your preferred future. So aka whatever you want to have happen, right? Your preferred future, your desires that you want to come to pass, you speak those things and that is what prophesying is. Friends, I can assure you, and I actually encourage you to do this. You can use a number of resources such as Blue Letter Bible, and you can look at the word that is translated as prophesy, and you can see what the possible definitions are. And you will see that, yes, it might have something to do with predicting, but it does not have to do with your preferred future. You know, It's not about you saying what you want to have come to pass. In fact, I, I challenge you to think of any true prophet in the Bible who that's the way that they prophesy, that they sit down and say, this is what I want to have happen, and they speak it. In fact, normally they're prophesying things that they probably did not want to have happen because a lot of times they were prophesying judgment to come. And, you know, I think about Jeremiah. He's the weeping prophet. He's sad that these things are going to happen, but he has to speak it because God has given him words to speak. And in fact, the false prophets in scripture are the ones who are rebuked for basically doing the same thing. They're saying what they want to have happen. They're speaking delusions out of their own hearts and mind. And let's just look real quick at Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. It says, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are prophesying, and say to those who prophesy from their own hearts, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen Nothing. So the false prophets are the people who look inside their own hearts, their own minds, they have their own desires, and they speak those things. So literally what David Crank is telling you prophecy is, is what false prophets do. And so this is really, really dangerous when he's encouraging you basically to be a false prophet. That's what he's telling you to do. Now, I also want to focus very quickly on uh, the passage that he referenced in Joel 2, and he talked about people uh, seeing visions and, and dreams, and he said, 
don't wait to dream and get your vision board. So he apparently thinks that in Joel 2, when it talks about people dreaming dreams and people uh, seeing visions, that it's all about what they desire to have happen in the future. And I'm sure we know that in English today, right? If we talk about vision, there's a couple of different ways that we can use that word. And I've used this example before, but if I tell you, um, hey, I went to the eye doctor and they said I have 20-20 vision, you know that I'm talking about my my eyesight. If I say, you know, um, I have a vision that I really want to open a restaurant one day, you know that I'm talking about some sort of ambition or some sort of goal. But if I said, hey, I was awakened in the middle of the night and I had a vision from heaven, you know that I'm talking about some sort of supernatural occurrence that took place. So I'm using the same word in three different ways. And so what David Crank is doing is going to Joel 2, where it talks about people seeing vision and the type of vision that they would be seeing is the supernatural type. They would be in, uh, let's say, like is happening in the book of Acts where Peter sees a trance and a sheet comes down, is in a trance and a sheet comes down from heaven. Like those are the sorts of visions that are being talked about. Yet Dev- David Crank makes it about your goals for your life. And the same thing, it talks about dreaming dreams. Well, we can use that word a couple of different ways, can't we? I went to bed last night and I had a dream. Or you can say, I have a dream that I want to accomplish this. Well, in Joel 2, it is talking about you being asleep at night and God supernaturally giving you a dream. David Crank turns around, twists the meaning, and makes it about your goals for your future. And friends, I want you to see that in all of this, what is really taking place is that David Crank's main teaching is that really you are in control and you can bring about whatever you want. The Christian message is that, the true Christian message is that God is sovereign, God is in control, and that we must deny ourselves. We don't get to do everything that we want to do. We need to follow God's ways. And so this is why it's such a big problem, because it really flips the roles. It makes us the sovereign ones in this sort of teaching, and it makes us who can uh, be the ones who can do whatever we want. Where in true Christianity, God is sovereign, and we submit to everything that he has for us. So friends, David Crank is obviously someone who is not rightly teaching God's word. Uh, A lot of false teaching in the video today and, and this sort of teaching, unfortunately, is very common for him. So we need to stay away from his teaching. And if you've been listening to him, I pray that you will get into your Bible, have a right understanding, maybe go and look at some church history, look at some historic confessions, what things uh, people have taught over the last couple of thousand years. Again, read your Bible and get into a good teach where, uh, a church where someone is going to correctly teach you the Word of God. All right, guys, I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has been helpful and you want to help me in my efforts to get this content out to more people on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, God bless.